system was based on a whole bunch of unequal and violent relationships. And one of the things that I think this narrative does better than any narrative that we have about slavery, better than any story we have, this narrative allows us to see how gendered forms of violence are central to the slave system, how gender and sexuality are at the core of this system of oppression. That Harriet Jacobs' life in slavery was one where she was constantly negotiating, as you'll see in the play, all of these different relationships, relationships of love to a slave that she cannot marry and cannot be with, that she cannot consummate that love. Relationships with a master who is whispering impure thoughts in her ears while she works, who she resists and does not, uh, does not allow herself to be raped by, despite the fact that other slaves on the plantation who she knew had been raped by him. It's a story of a relationship, a choice that she makes to have consensual sex with another white man, another slave owner in the area, as a way to resist the rape of her master. And so the way that this story gets told speaks powerfully to the way that gendered forms of expression or gendered forms of, of, of violence are part and parcel or central to the slave experience. One of the things that came out of the talk back on Thursday, someone asked, well, how prevalent was this? It was absolutely central to the architecture of slavery. And we often talk about slavery as a system of economic exploitation that was justified by a racial ideology, an ideology of racism, black people on the bottom, white people at the top. But it was also a system of sexual exploitation and violence. It was also a system that was structured around a whole bunch of unequal gender relationships. And they manifested themselves in lots of different ways. It wasn't just men and women, white men and black women. It was white women and black women. It was black men and white men. You see in the play all of these different ways in which masculinity and femininity, in which relationships between men and women, women and women, men and men, children and adults, different generations, manifest themselves around the categories of gender and sexuality. And it's something that I thought was as powerful in Harry Jacobs' autobiography, but was so powerfully <coughs> rendered and imagined in this play. It's something that really allows us to see in many ways beyond the narratives of history that we have in our head that we bring to this. It's a play that allows us to see slavery in a new way, I think, in a way that even Harriet Jacobs' narrative doesn't always fully allow us to see. And so that's one of the playwright's gifts and the playwright's uh, 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 freedom is to imagine how a story that is so powerful can become even more powerful. And I think that uh, it succeeds uh, brilliantly in that, in that way. Um, and then the third thing I'd just like to say is, uh, just briefly, and this brings us back to us, is how this text allows us to see slavery as a place, as a context for community. I talked a lot about, I talked briefly about this idea of slavery as a system of oppression, and it was certainly that. It was filled with trauma, filled with violence, filled with exploitation at every turn. And it was, in some ways, a totalizing system, as some historians and sociologists have referred to it as. It was a system that conditioned and controlled every aspect of the life of everyone involved, from master to slave and everywhere in between. But it was also a system within which, even though it shaped those relationships, experiences, and ideas, and so forth, it also was a system within which people carved out spaces to articulate and embody and express the full range of their humanity. And so one of the things I absolutely love about the imagining of the characters and the relationships between the characters in this play is the way in which, on one hand, you can be talking about rape and also talking about love, can be expressing outrage and also some sass. Right? There are moments of humor here, which serve as moments of resistance. The relationship between Harriet and her grandmother is a perfect example, of, and also of Harriet and Tom, the, her lover that she's not able to have a full relationship with. The way in which these relationships are, are, are shown to represent the full range of humanity, that this was a, a system that produced alienation and trauma and so forth, but it was also a system within which the enslaved people themselves and often other folks too were able to were able to maintain their faith, were able to maintain their hope, were able to maintain their sense of love, their sense of humor, their sense of sensuality, uh, and all of this broad spectrum of humanity is really represented in this play in a way that I think is quite uh, quite extraordinary. And so I just like to sort of end by saying that um, the I think the great achievement of this play is that it takes an individual autobiography and it creates a community of understanding. And that community of understanding is not just the community within which, within slavery, but it's a community of understanding in the theater. 
And so as much as this play, as it's adapted and recreated, gives us a history that may have been lost or only partially known, and so there's a relationship that it establishes there between our present, our understanding, or lack of understanding, and the past, which is all of our past. But it also then says, here is a space, a theater, that establishes new relationships between characters and other and real life people, between actors and audience members. And then ultimately, I think also, between audience members and what we do once we leave the theater. Because the thing that I, I mentioned, I loved getting lost in the theater to escape the real world. But what a play like this asks of us is to take the play with us when we go out into the real world. To understand that this history bears down deep and hard on us. That this is a history that haunts our interactions and haunts our lives, that stays with us, that we cannot forget. And it's one that also requires of us to think about what a new world could be for the people that didn't have the opportunity or the full freedom to experience that new world, that we're still in the project, we're still co-workers in the kingdom of culture, beckoning that new world that Du Bois imagined, that Harriet Jacobs imagined, that Lydia Diamond and this extraordinary group of folks here have imagined. So, that's why I would sort of say that. <laughs>